Hey guys, it's Leah. Welcome back or welcome to my channel and welcome to my October wrap up. I read 10 books in October. I'm really happy with the quantity and quality that I read and I will definitely say that there were also some disappointing reads but some really great ones. One of which doesn't even come out until next year and I'm dying to talk to you guys about it. But overall I really wanted it to be a month of spooky reads, of reads that I've been wanting to get to for so so long. I didn't really have a TBR in October so I really utilised just mood reading which was so fun. But I will say that November was definitely a month that I needed a TBR. I did do a TBR jar picks what I read for November. If you haven't watched it yet, definitely do so because I have so many incredible books that I'm so excited to read this month. But this one is all about October, so let's go into all of the books that I read from worst to best. The first book that I want to talk about, I'm not gonna include in the ranking just because it feels extremely wrong to rank this book. It was Minor Details by Adania Shibley. I read this book for the reading is Resistance Read Along that was happening at the end of October. It is an incredibly harrowing, impactful, powerful account and book dedicated and about the genocide in Gaza. This book is written by Adania Shibley who is a Palestinian author. This year she was set to win an award at the Frankfurt Book Fair for money details but because of everything that's happening currently in Gaza it was revoked which is absolutely abhorrent so that is the reason as to why the reading for resistance read along started so I did read it for that the book was incredibly impactful and hard to read it definitely included a lot of heavy subject matter so I would definitely say check trigger warnings before you go into this book but saying that it is one that I would also absolutely urge you to read if you can because it is just so important to read about what is happening in Gaza and Palestine from Palestinian voices Adania Shibley's writing style and storytelling too was incredibly raw and so so beautiful. Her writing style was astonishing. It was such an incredible book but so hard to read and I'm so happy that I did read it. And again it is one that I would definitely recommend to read if you can read it. I just wanted to mention that I did read it in this video and that I would recommend it but obviously it does not feel right to rank it. So now going on to the ranking. The worst book that I read in October was The Pool Bearers Club by Paul Tremblay. This book is a thriller that I had had on my TBR for years. I had always really anticipated to kind of rate it really highly and I did end up rating it two stars and I'm not gonna lie did I skim read the end because I was just so bored kinda. This book I was so excited for mainly because the narrative style if you can see here there are like annotations. So going into the book it's like there is an unreliable narrator. We have the narrator who is telling the story and then the person going through the entire- I nearly whacked myself in the face. And then the person going through the entire story being like, no, that's not really what happened, but like, who do we trust? But it was so boring. I really couldn't get through it and I am extremely disappointed because it was one that I, again, had anticipated to absolutely love and to be obsessed with and that definitely was not the case. I am still intrigued to read more from Paul Tremblay. If you have read any of his other books that you would definitely recommend, please let me know. But right now, I think I'm probably gonna take a little bit of a break before I go into any because this was just really not for me. I cannot tell you a single thing that happened in this book. The second worst book that I read in October, which actually hurts my heart to say, was Poems from the Book of Hours by Raina Maria Rauka. Raina Maria Rauka is my all-time favourite poet, so to say that one of his collections is this low on a ranking really hurts my heart, but this one just really was not for me. This book is often referenced as love letters to God, so it is solely religious poetry, and I am not a religious person. I love reading about religious commentary in books and in poems, but I don't really read or reach for anything that is solely religious because I can never really relate to it and this one is what that kind of was. If I had known that prior I don't know if I would have picked it up when I did but saying that I definitely want to read every single thing Raina Maria Rauka wrote and all of his collections so I'm still happy that I read it even though it definitely was not for me and was absolutely a little bit of a disappointment. Yeah I didn't even underline any of the quotes or the poems nothing really stood out to me so I'm gonna move along this quick because this one really broke my heart. I ended up rating like three stars. We then had my second poetry collection of the month and that was Divisible by Itself and One by Kay Tempest. This one was very kindly sent to me by Books Are My Bag. This one is shortlisted for the poetry category for the Books Are My Bag Reader Awards this year and I definitely liked this but it was another collection that didn't really hit me personally although it was incredibly beautiful. A lot of these poems were so visual and beautiful. This one really focuses on gender identity and sexuality which I loved reading about so much. Your opinion just often 
often reflects how much you can relate to a collection or how much you just enjoyed it and this one for me wasn't a favorite but i would definitely recommend it i've heard such great things about k tempest so i'm definitely intrigued to check more out from them yeah i would recommend it if you're looking for a quick poetry collection i ended up rating this one three stars also we then have a short story which had been on my radar again for so many years mainly because it's one of the most popular infamous gothic short stories it's meant to be very unreliable in its narrator and quite like feral women vibes and it kind of was but it didn't it didn't work for me it didn't gel 100 percent well with me the way that i wanted it to i really anticipated this to be another favorite and that was the yellow wallpaper by charlotte perkins gilman this is a short story literally just over 50 pages so it is one i would definitely recommend especially if you want to read more of the gothic genre or it is something that you want to try out and get into perfect for that as somebody who has already established their love for the gothic genre and has consumed so much of it based on people's reactions and opinions on this i expected so much more than what it gave i would definitely say that's probably Probably more of a thing on me and how much I really bigged this up in my brain in comparison to what it actually was and honestly like it's only 50 pages so there is only so much that it can do in such a short form but I do actually have an entire collection where is it I do have an entire collection of short stories by Charlotte Perkins Gilman which is obviously a lot bigger than that so I'm intrigued to see what else she has written and see if I gel well more with those but I think the yellow wallpaper as a standalone piece of short fiction I did really enjoy it but I think I picked it up a little bit too much in my brain, so I would recommend it. I ended up rating it, I think, three, three and a half stars. We then had an actual novel, and this one was a fantasy book that I had heard the most rave review things about this year i have seen a multitude of people i trust and just people in general rating it five stars so going into it i had fully anticipated to again another book that i yet again thought i was going to rate five stars and didn't was unfortunately legends and lattes by travis baldry this for me it was just such an incredibly cozy fantasy the stakes are so low and that is what i heard the most people praise about this book and i definitely agree that it was all of that and the ultimate comforting read but i feel like for me the stakes were perhaps a little bit too low i feel like as much as i am a vibes over plot sort of reader i definitely still want to read a little bit of a plot and i definitely do want stakes that are a little bit higher than just if their coffee shop is going to stay open so for me it was a little bit of a letdown i loved a couple of the characters though i definitely wish we saw a lot more of them or a lot more was explored in their characteristics and why they are the way they are i loved the sapphic element but i definitely wanted a little bit more higher stakes because for me i just got a little bit bored here and there this is one that i also listened to the audiobook for so i don't know if my experience would have been different had i picked it up physically but i feel like if you are after a really low stakes cozy comforting fantasy when nothing really happens and you can just read it to have a good time and not worry about like people dying or like the most intense kind of action fantasy scenes then definitely read it but for me i definitely wanted a little bit more i definitely wanted a couple more higher stakes potentially but yeah i really liked it the cafe cozy like autumnal wintry foresty vibes were there but it's a book that definitely i feel wasn't 100 percent for me though i am still intrigued to check out the sequel i do have the audiobook for that so i might read it soon hopefully we'll learn a little bit more about the characters and the plot and just the land and there will be a little bit more of a plot but yeah i finally read legends and lattes i ended up rating it three stars we then have another gothic short story this was definitely the month of short stories for me and that one was the fall of the house of usher by edgar Allan poe so this was a reread for me i read it in preparation for watching the fall of the house of usher show and i will say I don't know how to feel about it I have like two more episodes to watch and I'm not obsessed the way that I thought I would be I feel like this month or October was just a month where I had such high expectations for so many things and it just kind of didn't live up to it but that's okay it happens but if you have watched the fall of the house of Usher show please let me know what you thought about it because I was obsessed with the haunting of Hill house and blind manor like I've re-watched these shows I can't even remember how many times and I think about them constantly so I thought the fall of the house of Usher show would be the same because it is one that I've just been eagerly like waiting for ever since i saw the announcement but i'm not 100 percent obsessed so please let me know your thoughts but the short story the fall of the house of usher i absolutely love i loved it the first time i read it i rated it four stars then and i rated it four stars now i feel like it is such a perfect piece of gothic short story horror fiction that you should definitely read if you haven't already it is so dark and whimsical and grim and gross and claustrophobic and i just love it 
so much just under 100 pages i read it in one sitting and yeah if you haven't read it before i would definitely recommend you to i feel like again it's another one that if you are looking to get into gothic literature or even gothic classics and you're a little bit intimidated it is a great one to start with and honestly it was just so nice to return to something that i've read before that i absolutely adored and revisiting it was a joy so i'm very happy i did that in october and that was four stars then we have an entire collection of short stories as somebody who never really reads short stories i don't really know what overcame me in october but i'm also so happy about it and it was her body and other parties by carmen maria machado carmen maria machado wrote in the dream house which is my all-time favorite memoir such an incredible impactful just powerful read that again is one that i would recommend but this is her other published work and it is a collection of short stories and i really really loved it so many of these were so speculative and gothic in their horror and really spoke about girlhood and the unfortunate experiences sometimes of womanhood of being queer and it was just so incredible i will say obviously naturally with short story collections there were a lot of short stories that impacted me a lot more than others but it was such a beautiful and powerful read carmen maria machado's writing will never fail to astound me and honestly when finishing it i couldn't stop thinking about what she is going to do next i feel like she is an author that will probably stand the test of time and people will constantly return to her works because they are so incredible there is just something about the way she writes it's non-fiction and fiction that is so unique and unlike anybody else who is writing currently and that is what i love so much mixed with the fact that it is always constantly circling back to being queer and girlhood and just those experiences and how sometimes they are so great but also do come with a lot unfortunately of bad experiences and i just loved it so much this is another one that i ended up rating four stars it definitely could have been a five but like i said there were definitely short stories in this that i didn't like as much as others so i settled for a four and then the last physical book that i read in october and the second best book that i read was rouge by mona awar this book was my most anticipated book of the year and i will definitely say although i loved this so much and it was definitely the second best book that i read in october i did want a little bit more from it i did speak a lot more about it in my most recent vlog which i will link up above if you haven't seen it yet but this book as much as i adored it it was not my favorite mona award mona award is one of my all-time favorite authors she wrote bunny and all's well two of my all-time favorite books that i am constantly recommending and raving about i did kind of expect this to be on that same level unfortunately for me it wasn't i do think that the second half was a lot stronger than the first in my personal opinion but i will say that i definitely had a weird experience reading this this took me so much longer to read than books tend to normally do so much so that for the second half i did decide to pick up the audiobook instead of reading it physically and I definitely think that that was the best thing for me to do and I do want to stress that I do think it was more myself and I think on a reread because I definitely do want to return back to this book at some point I will love it more the second time round because I just feel like I picked it up at the wrong time but I love so much about this book I loved the commentary surrounding girlhood and relationships between mothers and daughters and how often they can be so complicated and difficult and raw I also love the commentary on the beauty industry and beauty standards on girls and women in society in general i thought that that was really impactful i loved reading about like the culty element i found it so fascinating and so interesting and i feel like it begged for such a thrilling reading experience and that i think for the second half of the book really really took me by surprise and i loved it so much because of that element it was definitely a slow burner and one that i would recommend if you love mona award or actually equally even if you haven't read anything from her before because you won't have the expectation of bunny and all's well in your head you might like it even more but unfortunately it didn't live up on the scale that I thought it would with all's well and bunny but I'm also incredibly aware that for me that is such a high scale and such a hard thing to beat so it was probably my own expectations I loved this I rated it four stars and then the best book that I read in October is actually a proof copy of a book so I don't actually own the book I read it on NetGalley and it is a book that comes out in the middle of February next year so there is still quite some time to wait for it but not too long and I promise you it is absolutely worth the wait and that is an education in malice by S.T. Gibson I 
this book I absolutely adored it for so many reasons. S.T. Gibson wrote A Diary of Blood which is such an incredible beautiful heartbreaking gothic read that I constantly recommend and would highly recommend you to read if you haven't already. But An Education in Malice is a Carl Miller retelling so it is sapphic, it is gothic, it has vampires, it's just so great. Like I honestly cannot recommend it enough and I just want to shout and scream about it. I need to put my review on Goodreads. I want to do a whole video on TikTok just raving about it because it was so good. It was beautiful for so many reasons. First and foremost, S.D. Gibson's writing style still always is so astounding. I can't wait to read every single thing they ever release. The vibes in Education in Malice is so dark academia, kind of set in this gorgeous like Victorian estate where kind of vampires may roam. There is like life living alongside death. It is so dark and whimsical and full of dangerous things. So you also have the dark academia element which is just perfect on top of that just the sapphicness and like sapphic longing and yearning and first experiences. It was just so good. The tension was incredible. The characterization was incredible. The setting. I was just absolutely obsessed. I read this book so so quickly and it was one that I absolutely did not want to put down every time I had the opportunity to read it I did and I loved every single second and I think that if you loved A Diary of Blood you will love An Education in Malice maybe even more but definitely on the similar scale or the same scale because it was so good and I definitely loved it maybe not just as much as A Diary of Blood because that book has a very special place in my heart but it was close it's definitely on that level for me this book was very close to perfect there were a couple of things with the ending i didn't 100 percent adore how it ended i feel like it was a little tiny bit rushed and i definitely would have loved to see it a little bit more like extended and drawn out but the book as a whole i rated 4.75 i did round it up to a five star it's such an incredible read and yeah I cannot wait to see people's reviews on it because I feel like everyone's gonna love it. I feel like it's gonna be one of the biggest books released next year and I cannot wait. But yeah, An Education in Malice was the best book that I read in October. It was just so good. So yeah those were the 10 books that I read in October. I feel like I had a really good reading month. Definitely had some disappointments but I'm trying not to focus on them and to just focus on all of the positives especially because I feel like November dare I say it is going to be even better and is already even better because I'm currently reading one book. I already cannot wait to film my November wrap up. I'm so excited. But yeah if you have read any of the books that I read in November and you enjoyed them or you disliked them please feel free to leave your thoughts. I would love to know what you thought about them all. And also feel free to let me know what your favorite book of October was and yeah as always if you are not subscribed and you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more content from me it would mean so much to have you here I have so many exciting spooky festive content coming that I cannot wait for you to see and also don't forget to leave a massive thumbs up if you did enjoy it means so much to me and it really does help me out and yeah thank you so much for watching and for being here and for spending some time with me I hope you enjoyed and I will see you again very soon with another video Thank you.